So listen, I understand the position you're in, you want to make some fractals, but you're not going to be going to the Wikipedia page to read all the math, and you probably haven't read a textbook about it, which is a lot more work, but luckily I did that for you, so let me show you how to make some fractals using Blender. So the first step is installing the tissue add-on, which comes shipped with Blender, you just install that, and what it's going to let you do is take some source object, a target object, and map the source object on every face of the target object, which sounds pretty complicated when you say it out loud, but really this is the kind of thing that lets you make a woven baskets out of any kind of object, which I made a tutorial about. But again, the idea here is just tiling one object on another, which is the exact kind of thing we need to make fractals, which is something that has a lot of iterations. So for example, we can just take a standard plane, subdivide it a bit, and then just delete the hole in the middle so we kind of have a donut-y plane. We then duplicate this so that we have two copies, we select both of these, and then using the tissue add-on, we just set this to tessellate. And what we get from this is kind of like the object nested in itself on every face, which is kind of like a fractal, but with only one iteration. So if you go to the object data properties and then go to the tissue settings, and then I guess also go to the advanced settings, we can then increase the iteration count, which makes it more and more fractally. And I know what some of you are thinking, just having a lot of iterations doesn't make it a fractal. Technically, it's just an approximation. And to you, I would say, shut up. Just just shut up. Okay, it's I, I understand it's not a fractal. I get it. But this is a cool way to kind of approach a fractal. And on top of that, what we can do now that we have our whole setup is just take our target object and just manipulate the geometry so just change it in any way using extrusions or whatever and then we just hit the refresh button and then we get you know the same kind of thing but now it's tessellated on our new target mesh so this is kind of a fast way to do a lot of fractally types of things so we can use different kinds of uh, target and source objects to get different kinds of results and the last thing we can do is enable animatable which is going to let us actually animate our source and target objects therefore animating the fractal and all that stuff is pretty neat i guess it's kind of cool right